Tea time with Tosh Sticks. Tea time with Tosh. Yeah. Tea time with Tosh. Yeah, so anyone gives a fuck. Well, hello, everybody. And welcome to this very special episode of Tea Time with Tusk. And I'll explain why it's special, or special to me at least. Um, a while ago, a few months ago now, I was talking to Jeff uh, from the Steaming Cup of Reason channel. And we're just talking about food and everything and my love of Vietnamese food. And, and he mentioned he lived in Vietnam with his partner. And I spoke about a dish I had when I was a kid that I'd never managed to find again. Or at least not the way I had it back then. Excuse the sizzling. And I explained it to him and what was in it and how it tasted and he immediately knew what it was. It was the Minga. And so... He said, he offered, or I asked, I can't remember. It's probably me badgering him though. Um, I asked if he would make it, or if he, his partner could make it. And after a little bit of time, a little backwards and forwards, she agreed that she would make it. But, you know, life gets in the way and things. So, it's taken a little while, but it, it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just... Um, take this garlic out before it burns, put on some um, some paper to strain it, some kitchen paper to strain it and then I'm going to get on with a couple more things and I'll explain why I, I was just so excited about this and why I was maybe a, a little insistent well not really, I mean I wasn't, I wasn't pushy or anything but I would occasionally just ask and Jeff would be like yeah 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 I'm on it, I'm on it and to his credit he was, and it's done. Right, so, now I hope you've watched his video from um, yesterday on this dish where his, his partner, uh, Pearl, made it. Now, for a wee bit of context, oh hang on, just before I do that. These are my glass noodles, which I have in some uh, hot water. I'm just going to drain them off and then put them in some cold water or some ice water to cool them down and so I'm going to pause I'll do that and I'll come back so I'm just doing a little bit of prep in the background here I thought while I'm doing that I'll just have a little chat with you and explain why I was so excited about this uh, particular dish and this recipe more than the dish itself uh, when I was just uh, very young um, a Vietnamese family moved into the area. Well, a few Vietnamese families did. Um, I don't know if they were fleeing war or political or religious persecution or anything. That We were just kids. We wouldn't have understood that in any case. But they didn't speak very much, if any, English. And they, they didn't know how to get by in the country. So my parents volunteered to help naturalise them. Um, and just show them around really, help them, you know, until they didn't need help. Uh, their names were uh, Van and Tan, and they had a son named Young, and a daughter, she was only a baby though, I don't remember her name. And it was odd to us, because we lived uh, uh, right on the outskirts of the city, in a very rural area, so we didn't really have any contact with people from other countries, other cultures, not really. But we'd never met people before who didn't speak either English uh, or one of the, the Gaelic languages or the Gaelic languages. So everything um, was difficult because we didn't speak Vietnamese, they didn't speak English. Um, they'd never used a knife and fork. You know, things like that to us were completely alien. But they were friendly, and so once a week or so, we would go down to their house and we'd show them how to use our money and all those sorts of things. 
and in return they would cook for us and they didn't have much money as you can imagine so and they were still getting used to our food but one day we went around and they made us this chicken noodle dish and it was the most delicious thing I'd ever had in my life Com flavours that were completely different to anything we'd ever had I'm going to just hang on let's turn the camera around get away from the smoky oil uh, flavours that were completely different to anything we'd ever had before and oh it was fantastic and I can I could still taste it years and years later but I never managed to find it again now I've been to Vietnam a couple of times and around Cambodia and the like but it was never I never found that one so when I was chatting to Jeff and he mentioned that he's a uh, his wife's Vietnamese, he lives in Vietnam and he, he knew what the dish was and he said, oh yeah, I can, uh, I'll ask my partner to make that and I got so excited because now I knew what the dish was called and everything but not only that, it was going to be made properly not a restaurant one, not a fancified westernised version of it a proper Vietnamese main ga and that was, I was so excited, I still, and when he made the video yesterday I was absolutely over the moon. So, I've, I'd advise you to go to watch his video if you want uh, the recipe and how to make this because I'm going to make a hack version of it because there's a couple of things I'm going to do wrong or differently. So, yeah, go and watch his video. And I, <laughs> while I was watching his video and I saw how much work he'd put into it and um, it was, you know, he said he was very nervous about it but he'd done a very good job of it and I thought maybe I should up my game and put a little more effort in but then I thought no that's what the terrorists want and that's not going to happen so I'll move that tomato puree out of the way because that's not important to the dish so I have um, I fried off my garlic as you can see I couldn't find the dried bean sprouts eh, not bean sprouts the dried bamboo shoots so I had to buy a uh, tinned but I'm going to miss that kind of nutty umami flavour. So I've added a little Shaoxing to that. Hopefully that will help it out. We have our green onions, our black peppers over there somewhere. We'll come to that in a bit. We have our toppings. And here we have some bean sprouts. That I mistakenly identified as bamboo shoots. Some chilli. Uh, some mustard, uh, mustard cress I think it is. And some pak choy. And some finely chopped pak choy which is going to... This is, this is going to get into the broth, this will be a topping. So, again, I'm going to pause, I'm going to get my chicken, do that, then we'll go back to the big pot and we'll take it from there. And of course I did forget something. Of course I did. I mean, it wouldn't be one of my videos unless I'd forgotten something. Um, sliced garlic, but I've got absolutely no shortage of garlic. And I'm going to use my little mandolin to slice that up. So I'll come back once I've um, quartered the chicken and I'll turn the camera back around to the pot. Okay, so I'm back. I've done my, most of my prep there. And I'm just going to... These are the chicken bones that I've fried in the oil along with the green onion bottoms just to keep as much flavour in as I can and the oil is the same oil I fried the garlic in I just took a couple of ladles of that out so I'll take the chicken out I don't want that in there so if I remember Jeff's recipe correctly I should let these brown like so and then we're going to pour in some water I hope that doesn't steam the, the lens up too much. I hope it doesn't steam it up at all. No, that seems okay, I think. And then into that goes our garlic. Unceremoniously <laughs> dumped in. That's uh, three cloves of garlic, just finely sliced with my little mandolin. And then the next part is we put the lid on, let that come to the boil. So we'll do that and then I'll come back again. 
Okay, so that's been cooking away a little bit. So now I'm going to add the chicken. Now I've cut it slightly differently uh, than Jeff did because uh, my partner doesn't like big chunks of meat, so I'm, I've cut it into more manageable sized pieces. So in goes the chicken. These are um, cooking chopsticks, just in case anyone's interested. They're relatively huge compared to chopsticks you would normally use to eat with. You don't have to use them, you know, I, ju I just prefer it because that's how I learned to cook like this. So, I say how I learned, I'm still learning, you know, I've still got a long way to go. So in with our chicken, and then in with our bamboo shoots, which have been marinating in some Shaoxing and a little bit of salt. I'll just put that Shaoxing in, not too much though, don't want to overpower it. So we'll get that moving. Oh, immediately the smells coming up off that are delicious. All that garlic and everything. I hope this looks enough like uh, Jeff and Perils version that, that they'll at least recognise it. So and into that we're going to put our fish sauce. I've used squid brand because I just wanna just wanna like it. Doesn't have to be that one. You can use any oyster oyster fish sauce you like, I suppose. So there you go. Let our just going to leave that for a bit. Try not to mess with it too much. Oh, one. See, I forgot something again. This is the, the fried garlic. Add some of that. Not too much because I want to keep some of it for a garnish. Along with our black pepper and the tops of the green onions. So, into there now. I'm just going to add the outer leaves of the pak choy simply because they can be quite tough and the inner leaves are much more tender making much nicer garnish so these are just going to go in to let them wilt and add just a little bit of, a little bit of colour to the dish so I'm not going to touch that for a little while and then when it's done I'll come back and we can look at it again see you in a bit okay well it's a little bit later on Everything's uh, cooked, it's been cooking away for a while. So, here's the moment of truth. Now, let me just find somebody to put that ladle out of the way. I'll, be, I'll get that back in a moment. So, we'll take out our chicken first. And, oh, it looks so good, it smells great. Oh, the chicken <laughs> doesn't want to come up, hang on. There we go. And you could convince it eventually. So, I suppose it doesn't matter if it's skin tied up or down, does it? And we'll take some of the the pak choy that I said I was going to braise in the broth for a bit. That doesn't want to play either. Get up, you bugger. There you go. So, maybe just a little bit more chicken. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Sorry, I just realised. You couldn't see what I was doing at all there, I had the bow on the wrong side. Probably just as well because I was making an arse of it. So there we have our, the chicken on the bed of noodles. And I'm going to add just a little couple of things to this. I'm going to add some bean sprouts. Um, a little of the chopped chilli. Not much, don't want too much spice in here. Uh, some of the, the shredded pak choy, black pepper of course, some of the green onions, excuse my terrible, terrible editing here and just hands everywhere over in front of the camera, and pour over that lovely broth, which will heat the noodles through again, because obviously they've been um, rinsed off and left to go cold the heat of the broth or we'll cook them again and on top of that last but not least a little bit of the 
the fried garlic and a little lemon wedge. That looks great. So thanks to Jeff and Pearl for sharing the recipe with me. I really, uh, I, I can't thank you enough to be honest. This is something I've been wanting to do for such a long time but I didn't even know where to go about it and how to start. So yeah, thank you very 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 much. Now I'm going to go and take this bowl, this is Etty's bowl, then I'm going to get mine and then I'm going to sit down and I'm definitely going to enjoy this one. Cheerio and Rasta.